So, as we all know, Hollywood looks at IPs like Ian Watkins does babies. And with the growing number of asylum patients that believe there must be someone who looks like you on screen for you to be properly represented, that means there is no depth too deep that Hollywood will not dive to destroy that which we hold dear, even man's best Dane. That's right, Scooby-Doo fans, the time has come. You are next on the chopping block with another origin story, this time with Velma. And let's hope this series ends swiftly as well. Before we do, of course, please subscribe to join my kingdom so you don't miss a new video. So this soiled diaper to the eyes of an origin story starts off with teenage Daphne in the girls' locker room making her way to the showers where she and her friends chatter about stereotypes in modern media, like gratuitous amounts of nudity and sex in the first few episodes. All the while, these underage girls are only covered by strategically placed bubbles because, get it? It's stereotype, tropes, and cliches. Like what they were just talking about. Anyway, the squawking goes on until a fight breaks out between Daphne and one of the girls, and Daphne nearly drowns one of them for some reason. Which I suppose is just your average girl meetup, I guess, but before Daphne can kill one of them, she is sent flying by none other than Velma. After a brief moment showing these two hate each other, Velma goes to open up her locker and finds that Brenda is standing there for a moment before she falls over and the top of her skull pops off, revealing that she has a lot in common with the writing staff. In response to this, the girl being stuffed in the locker and uh, with no evidence at all to support this, Velma is detained by the police. It is here we learn Velma has PTSD that can cause a heart attack because of the guilt of not figuring out what happened to her mother. She has these weird Lovecraftian episodes that aren't important until they're important, so remember not to care for any of them until the show says so. We also meet Daphne's adoptive moms, who tell Velma in 24 hours, they're gonna arrest her for Brenda's murder. You know, with zero evidence, of course, because that's how the American justice system is supposed to work. On her way out, Velma bumps into Freddy, who is now just a pretty boy moron who doesn't know who Velma is. We see Freddy and Daphne are together, and Freddy doesn't quite want to do anything with Daphne, despite her zipping his pants right there, and uh, Velma goes home. Yeah, seriously, like, there's, there's nothing there. Later at home, Velma has to be the one to inform her dad that she was detained and is a suspect in a murder. And he is completely without agency in this. In fact, he tells her it's her own fault. Yeah, real dad of the year material here, he almost gives Mr. Wormwood a run. After they argue for a moment, we are shown that Velma's dad's girlfriend is right there, and then out of nowhere in the middle of the discussion, she just tears off her clothes and starts having a baby photo shoot. Is this supposed to be funny? Anyway, she offers Velma a job at her malt shop, and Velma agrees just so we can have this stupid scene too. At the malt shop, Daphne and friends are holding a wake for Brenda, and they are such good friends because, you know, talking about how your friend was a slut, but not just a slut, she was a different kind of slut. I, I'm, I'm sorry, was this written by Lenny Wozniak? The fuck is going on here? I bet even porn stars refer to each other with more dignity than this. Uh, so apparently this is the same night that Velma has also just started working at the malt shop, and she gets called out for being a suspect, and then she abruptly leaves. In the alley, Velma overhears some rustling behind the dumpster and finds Freddy, who's having an existential crisis about not being a man like his dad wants him to be. Velma then brings up how her mother disappeared, and this is why she has these PTSD episodes whenever she feels absurd guilt. After this talk, a car speeds down the alley, and Freddy leaves Velma for dead like Donald Gennaro. Just before Velma is smeared across the pavement and my torment can end, we are introduced to Velma's simp, Nega Shaggy. Or Norville for short. Norville is here for Velma because he has information about Brenda's murder. The pair then drives off and it turns out that Norville has no information about the murder and this upsets Velma as much as it does me. However, he brings up that his camera is missing and whoever has it is most likely the killer. Velma then asks to be dropped off at her place, believing her dad's girlfriend's camera is Norville's. Back at her house, Velma sneaks in quietly, picks up the camera, but learns that it is loaded with nothing but baby pictures. So it couldn't possibly be the girlfriend. What a shocker. This triggers another episode, and of course this bitch gets saved by the girlfriend, and Velma's dad acknowledges she has episodes. 
Wait, an absent father's second. You didn't even believe your daughter had these episodes? Really? I get people today think they're babies, animals, or important, but you couldn't bother to check in at all with your own kid to see how she is? Ah, yeah, writers think parents were always absent, that's right. Anyway, after Velma and the girlfriend have a heart-to-heart, -heart, Velma has a flood of the same memories we saw before of her and her mom, only this time we see that Velma was a little fucking monster who was drawing on her mom's writings, drinking her alcohol, and caused her to lose an eye. Great, I guess that mystery is solved, I guess. Cool. So Velma decides that she's going to be different now and discards the present that her mom got her all those years ago. The next day at school, Velma has changed her clothes and looks better because this series cannot stop ripping off Meg Griffin episodes. Velma is popular for a brief moment before one of Daphne's friends reminds everyone that she is a murder suspect and everyone gets violent. One of these girls even throws a paper cutting board at her, but then out of nowhere, Freddy jumps in and Uno reverses this shit back at her, which bounces off, breaks and cuts this dude's leg off. And I'm just at a loss at this point. And before my gerbil can restart, apparently everyone is now paying attention to Freddy, who reminds everyone that Velma is the same person they've relied on for all of these better test scores. Okay. Then Daphne confronts Velma in the bathroom and tells Velma that she can have Freddy if she wants, because he even kicks other kids out of the bathroom at the malt shop. Then Velma asserts that Freddy might know or have information about what is happening. Then she rushes off to Norville's and demands that he drive her to Freddy's. They pull up to Freddy's mansion, Velma hops out, jumps the wall, sneaks into the house, and out of nowhere, while she's sneaking around, Norville calls her. Not because he saw someone, not because someone saw her, not because he dug up a lead, no. I'm bored. Are we fucking kidding? We'll get into that later, because right now, Velma is having an episode, and one that might finally be the big one. If only that were true. Velma then begs Norville to do something, so on a whim, he decides to just spill his guts and acknowledge to her how much he loves Velma. And... She laughs. The more he says, the more she laughs, and the calmer she gets, and I would feel bad for Norville if he basically wasn't a stand-in for one of Pokimane's followers. Sam! After Velma gets over her episode, she gets into Freddy's room and finds Norville's camera under Freddy's bed, but she finds that the photos do not have the proof she was looking for. Then Freddy walks out and discovers that Velma has been sneaking around and reveals that he didn't finish puberty. Yep. This is why he's so self-conscious and stole Norville's camera. And after this reveal, Freddy walks towards Velma while reaching inside his robe. Because he totally has a weapon there, right? Then, without a knock on the door or a ringing of the bell, the cops arrive and they shoot Freddy in his thighs. Probably severing his femoral arteries, but whatever. And they arrest him. Except he pulled out a checkbook? So that, you know, as Freddy says, he could pay off Velma to not reveal that he hasn't gone through puberty. So without evidence, just cause, or anything of the nature, Freddy is arrested and Norville drives Velma home. She grabs the present out of the trash and heads in, but not before Norville notices that some cockroaches are scurrying around the recycler. When he opens it, the pair discovers that Krista has been murdered as well. And that's the ending of the first episode. Okay, seriously, what the fuck was that? There are only so many ways you could say a comedy isn't funny, and I'm almost at a loss for words with this show. The first joke is literally a cockroach humping another cockroach. That was a thought someone conjured, put to paper, and then another person greenlit. I am not kidding when I say none of these jokes land. Now, admittedly, there is one that came close, and it was in the trailer. You see, when they find Brenda and her body falls over, there's just a pun that censors it out and it just says mindless violence. Yeah, that's it. The closest this show actually gets to a chuckle from me is a pun in the trailer. All other jokes otherwise make the Cleveland show look like a George Carlin routine. If that wasn't bad enough, the smartest character here is dumber than the hippie that ate dog treats for God's sake. Scooby-Doo is not some revolutionary comedy or transformative thought experiment. It is a kid's first mystery story that did its job well enough to become a mainstay for Hanna-Barbera. Velma decides to take any of the thought that was put into that series that it claims to be an origin to and strips it of more layers than a suicidal potato. You want smart characters? There are none to see here. You want a show that will at 
at least bring together a team of different people with unique skills? Ha, moron. How about we form a group comprised of a racist with lethal guilt trauma, a simp, a popular girl, and a man-child? And fuck the dog, apparently. No idea if or when Scooby will pop up, but man, <laughs> with what is going on here, it does not fill me with any hope. This isn't rocket science, but my god, how do the writers think this is an improvement over the original series? Shaggy might not be the sharpest of the bunch, but he didn't interrupt Velma while she's trying to sneak about. And how ironic this show constantly brings up all these stereotypes, because Mindy just continues to propagate how unfunny women are. Like, obviously there are funny women, but if there was a choice between listening to a stand-up special by Mindy or arguing with a piece of macaroni for a year, I can guarantee you that piece of macaroni and I will have already settled on whether or not that stupid dress was blue or not. If you want to create a story that pokes fun at tropes and cliches, then you should actually try to change the story so that those tropes and cliches are not what your show becomes. Haha, <laughs> isn't it funny how self-aware we are about common through lines in stories? Haha, <laughs> isn't it funny that we pointed out most adult shows open with gratuitous amounts of nudity? Yeah, here's a simple way to get around that. Instead of sticking with the cliches or tropes, throw in a curveball that changes the story a little. Tired of exposition dumps in which the character knows everything about the monster, including its deepest, darkest secret? Then have the monster jump in and kill the character that's dumping the exposition. See, there's so much more to go, and there's nine more episodes. How? Yeah, there's, there's so much more to go here, and I can confirm that yes, Velma is just as awful as you've probably heard, and trying to struggle through even one of these episodes is like going down a wet slide lined with nail heads. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.